Well, guys, welcome to 10 Easy Conversations to Have with Your Database. So uh, has anybody ever felt a little awkward as far as, well, what do I say when I call my people? Yeah. And we find ourselves maybe feeling like we're saying the same things over and over again and needed a fresh idea? Yes. All right. Well, good. Well, hopefully today we're going to come away with a couple of fresh ideas and uh, give, give you some variety to your conversation. So, uh, but some of this isn't going to be new. It's going to be the same things we've talked about over and over again. Okay. But one of the things that I absolutely love is that in the bold classroom, they are talking about moving away from scripts and moving more toward conversations. And, and that's a, that's a discussion I've been having for several years now. It's, um, I don't, I don't want you memorizing a script. I want you internalizing certain things, making it part of who you are, but I want you having real conversations with people. And, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today is how do we have those real conversations? Now, that doesn't mean that we might not have a little snippet, a, a little two sentences or three sentences that we want to be really intentional about getting into our conversation. And, and if you want to call that a script, I'm, I'm fine with that. But scripts usually don't build really good connections. Conversations do. And, and one of the problems with scripts is the person on the other side doesn't know their lines, right? <laughs> you, you, you open up a script book and you read it, uh, they haven't. They don't know what the answers are supposed to be, right? How are you doing today? Great. Okay. But they don't know they're supposed to say great. Um, <laughs> but they, they want to tell you how rough of a day it's been or how bad traffic is. And then my response doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So we, we already had to be used to kind of, you know, dancing uh, when we do it. So this shouldn't be anything new. And, and what are the most comfortable and relaxing conversations for you to have? Take clients out. Just out of all the conversations you have in your lives, which ones are the easiest? Weather. <laughs> I don't. I don't know enough about the weather that I can have a weather conversation with everybody. I, I know what you're saying. It's a, it's a good joke. How are they doing? Just asking people how they're doing. That's a really easy conversation. Okay, but it's just the the normal banter, right? It, it's not that we're talking with a specific purpose in mind. We're just connecting with people. We're taking a genuine interest in them and asking them questions about their life. It's the conversations we have with family and friends, right? Well, that's, to me, the coolest thing about this job is we make money, we succeed by making friends, talking to our friends, and helping our friends. How's that for a nice way to think about your job? Yeah. Is there anything more that we really do than that, Amy? As far as the conversation? Uh, it's just as far as our job, you know? We, we, we make build relationships. Friends and we help our friends, right? That's, that's, that's me. Yeah, it's, it's building relationships, yeah. So, um, so what does moving from a script to a conversation look like? Well, um, Bold has introduced us to the concept of a Ford sandwich, okay? And I know what some of you are thinking is, what's a Ford sandwich? Some of you that have been to Bold know what a Ford sandwich is. You know what a Ford sandwich is, don't you? Yes, yes. what's a Ford sandwich look like? Yes. Kind of like a Chick-fil-A sandwich, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's bread and meat and bread, okay? Which is we're gonna talk about personal stuff. Somewhere in the middle, we're gonna slide in a little bit of real estate and then we're gonna talk personal, okay? Is there a script for personal relationships? No, there's really not. If we're gonna connect with people and be really intentional about building relationships, we can't be really intentional about our language. We need to be in the moment and responsive. But for some of us, that comes really natural. 
And for some of us, that's a little more labored. And so that's where Ford comes in, is to help be a reminder or what are some things that when you talk and build personal relationships, what do we talk about personally? Well, it's their family, their occupation, their recreation, their dreams. And if you're Cheryl, we can add a W to the end. And, and we talk about the weather. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, but that's usually, uh, that's funny, Cheryl. Uh, hope you don't mind me picking on you just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Isn't that what we talk to our friends about? You know, what, 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 what's going on with their family? What's going on in their life? You know, how are the kids? How's the husband or the boyfriend or, or whomever? How are things at work? You know? How are you dealing with COVID? Are you getting to take off for the holidays? Uh, recreation, have you done anything fun? Did you go to see this movie? Did you go see that uh, artist that came to town? Or did you check out the game this weekend? And then their dreams, you know? So where are you headed to? So are you and that guy getting married anytime soon, right? I mean, those are the kind of things that we talk about, right? With our friends. But we want to start kind of having those same conversations with the people we want to be our friends. And we're going to fit it in. Those, those are ones I can't give you a script for. You, you got to kind of live in the moment for that start of the conversation and the end of the conversation. But they shouldn't be that tough. You know, it, it, it's, hey, how are you doing? That's not a bad way to start, Right. And, hey, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, hope to talk to you again soon. Not a bad way to end it. Now, you probably need a little bit more in there, but you're going to be feeding off of them. They're going to be feeding off of you, and um, it should come pretty natural. And with practice, you're going to get better and better at that. But what people want to know is, okay, I'm talking to my friends or family. Yeah, I can do that forever. I can have 15-minute conversations with my friend. But how do I get real estate into the conversation? Do you ever think that was like? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> so that's really what we're going to focus on today. It is, I've got 10 easy ways for you to slide real estate into the conversation. And I say 10 loosely because um, the first one, you know, where's the beef? Meat and the sandwich. Okay. The first one that I'm going to share with you is don't talk about real estate, okay? If you have never broached real estate, if it has been two years, three years, five years since you talked to that person and you call them up with the intention to talk about real estate, how's that call going to be received? Negatively, right? They're going to feel like it's a sales call. Call and connect with, okay? Just have a real conversation. Hey, I was thinking about you because, and it could be anything. I saw your post on Facebook. I drove past the restaurant where we used to hang out. You know, I ran into so-and-so um, and, and you came up in conversation. You, you may have to invent the story. You may have to go look them up on Facebook to see what popped up on Facebook, okay, <laughs> to have the phone call. And that's okay. And sometimes it could just be a thought, you know, hey, I was thinking back, man, I could not believe it had been 10 years since I've worked at so-and-so and, and was thinking about that. And you came to mind and I wanted to reach out and see if your number still worked. Okay. And then just have a conversation catching up with. Them. And, and if I haven't talked with somebody in four or five years, or I've never had a business conversation with them and we are just catching up. I'm probably going to be asking them some questions about what's going on in their world. They're going to have some questions about what's going on in my world. And that's an opportunity for me to bring real estate up. I don't need to go deep into it, you know, but hey, what have you been up to? You know, well, gosh, I mean, really, most of my time has either been spent with the kids or working on building my real estate business, you know, or I've been doing this and working on building my real estate business. You know, it's okay to mention real estate in there, but let's not turn it into sales call and, and end the conversation with, um, 
And if you're ever thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, don't forget about me and give me a call. All that work we just did to connect with them just, just got lost, yeah. right? Save that for the next call, okay? So other reasons that, that we can call that have absolutely nothing to do with real estate, call your people to wish them happy birthday, happy holidays, or happy home anniversary. okay? Let, let's, let's leave those as celebratory calls and leave it about being about them. Let's leave them feeling appreciative of us and save the sale for the next call. Okay. Are those easy calls to make? Yeah. And, and sometimes it's just going to be a care call, you know, and, 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 and it doesn't have to be because um, the, the last three times I talked to him, I talked to him about real estate. Well, well, take a break this time. Just connect with them and just be genuine with them. Again, we want to remind them that we're there. And if we've done a good job in the other three phone calls, they're probably going to ask us, so how's real estate going? And that's okay. We just don't want to be the one to bring it up. Okay. Simple conversation so far? Can you do that, Amy? No problem. All right. And I've found over the past year with pandemic, it's easy to bring that up. Hey, how's your family? Anybody been sick? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Nope, it certainly has. And, uh, and, and if it gets bad again, it'll be a time when we want to delve back into that again. So, all right, number two, call them together details. Okay, and, and what I mean by that is let's just fill in the blanks on our spreadsheet. You know, call and have that phone conversation. You know, hey, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? How's the work? Hey, while I've got you on the phone, the, the, the reason I initiated this call today is I'm updating my database and I want to make sure I have all my people's most current information. That's a professional thing to ask, right? So, and there's nothing wrong with asking it in that way, okay? But if you're not quite comfortable with making that business request, switch it up a little bit and say, Hey, um, I'm updating my birthday card list right. or my Christmas card list and wanted to make sure I had your address right. Hey, as long as I'm writing that down, what's your email? Fantastic. Be looking for my Christmas card in a couple of weeks. Okay. That's easy. Right? And then I go back to talking personal. Okay, I didn't have to make it blatantly, aggressively real estate. What I did, though, is I gave myself a vehicle to, to connect with them in another way. Because guess what's on my Christmas card? Real estate. Right? My logo. And even if I don't have it blatantly on my Christmas card, uh, it's going to be in the next mailer that I send them for sure, you know, on my newsletter, okay? It, it created an environment where I can farther the conversation and can move it more toward real estate, okay? Um, and don't be afraid to ask people because there's a lot of people out there that um, are on Facebook, but they've got a fake Facebook name. And, and so I'm a big advocate for everybody that's in my database. I want to be connected with them on Facebook, okay? Because I share a lot of information on Facebook. And that's another set of touches for me. So when I go to make my phone call, I'm going to double check and make sure am I connected with them on Facebook. And I'm going to go look for them if I can. And, and if I'm calling to update the records and everything, and I'm, and I'm saying, hey, by the way, I went to look for you on Facebook and couldn't find you do, do you use Facebook or are you on there under a different name and I'm going to try and use that as an opportunity for us to facilitate connecting together okay does that make sense is that an easy conversation 
Does that give us another way to connect? All right. Well, let's get into some that are a little more intentionally real estate. <coughs> and that's to ask for help or opinions. Okay. Hey, Cheryl, it's Trey. How are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Hey, I wanted to reach out to you today because um, I just updated my website. And, and, I, and I know you've got a discerning eye for that sort of thing. I was wondering if I sent you the link. Would you look it over and let me call you back in a couple of days and get some feedback on what you thought of it? Would that be okay? Okay. Did I ask you to buy anything or sell anything? Make a great sacrifice? Spend a bunch of money with me? No. Did I make you feel appreciated and important? I hope so. That was my intention. Um, are you reminded I'm in real estate? Yeah. And you certainly will be when you look at my website, right? Because guess what's on my website? All about buying and selling houses and here's inventory that's available and here's why you ought to hire track. Okay. Um, and, and it could be anything. It doesn't have to be your website. It could be, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get my, my app out to everybody. And this is really good for brand new agents. But before I send it to everybody, I wanted to get some of my best friend's opinion on it and, and was hoping that you would download it, take a look at it. And, and before I send it to all my people, give me your feedback and tell me what you think about it. Is that an easy conversation to have? To make them feel important and special? Hope so. That's the intention. Um, logos, taglines, um, asking them for their help. You know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working on building my real estate business and I'm looking for new places for me to connect with people. Do you know of any community events or festivals or groups that, that are going on or that I should be looking into for me to join to meet new people? Again, did I ask them to buy or sell anything? No. But did I remind them I'm in real estate and actively working to build my business and looking for customers? Yes. Mission accomplished. What you thinking there, Amy? Those are good. I guess I had gone on to events and festivals and that had given me some ideas. Um, I mean, there's an event or a festival I do every fall. And I was just thinking, well, and, and there's a Christmas parade we're going to do in the same area in December. And I was thinking, hey, let me call all the people I met at the festival and say, hey, we're going to be in the Christmas parade. Look for us or whatever. Yeah, which is... Uh... Uh, going to be number five, six, or seven in there. Um, so you're you're on the right track, inviting people to things. Um, so love that. Um, requesting introductions. What is over that? Enter your search term. Why does that pop in there? Okay. I don't know why that's floating on my screen. Let me go back. All right, request introductions. So what that says for you is key uh, contractors and vendors. Okay. Do you guys see where that says enter your search term? Or y'all don't see that? I don't know what that came from or why it's popped up. Okay. I see it. I can't make it go away. It's going to ruin my beautiful video. So is that contractors and vendors? <laughs> contractors and vendors. So... Um, I call you up. Hey, Cheryl, it's Trey. Doug Williams, how are you doing? How's family? How are the kids? You know, what's been going on with your work? Hey, the reason I was reaching out to you today is I'm working on building my vendor list because, you know, in real estate, I'm, I'm continually needing to use different contractors for my clients. And I realized that I don't have a really good drywall contractor or an estate sale person. Do you happen to know anybody in either of those two fields that would be good for me to meet? 
Is that an easy call? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we need really robust vendor list anyways? Yes. Yes. You know, if you were to sit down and think of all the contractors you might need in a house, it's probably going to be a list of 80 different contractors you need to know. Okay. From carpet cleaners to uh, trim work to cabinet company to countertops to plumber, electrician, roofer, gutter company, landscaper, tree removal, septic tank. I mean, you could go on and on and on. I want to have all of those people as a resource for me, right? I don't know all those people. But guess what? The people I know probably know somebody in those. And so I could do this over and over and over again, picking a different couple of contractors each time I do it, you know, a different field to try and build my vendor list out. And, and who am I going to trust first is probably the people that my people trust, right? Just like I'm in the referral business, I, I want referrals to people that I can trust. And, and here's the cool thing about that, guys is not only do I now potentially have a vendor that, that I can use, I'm going to call and try and connect with that vendor and get to know them, find out about their business so I can confidently recommend them. But guess what vendors do also? They buy houses. That's another person from my database. that I just grew my connections by having my people introduce me to a vendor for the purposes of helping the people I'm already connected with. Is that like a win, 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 win something? Right? All the way around. Uh, and what I mean by key players and contacts is as you're growing your business and, and you're looking for different niches or niches to serve, you may find that there's certain people that, that really pull on your heartstrings and you want to connect with, okay? And, and maybe it's senior citizens that you want to help, okay? Well, who is connected around senior citizens, okay? Well, maybe I want to meet an elder care attorney, okay, or an elder law attorney, uh, an estate plan, uh, financial plan. Uh, maybe I want to go meet somebody at a retirement home. That, that's there in the, the, the onboarding process, you know, in, in their front office, okay? Maybe I want to service uh, divorcees. Well, who do I need to know around divorce, okay? What about married couple? So think about who are the players I need? You know, do I need to go meet funeral home directors? Um, do I need to meet bridal planners, um, wedding planners? Wedding planners, yeah. Wedding planners, um, to, so that I could develop a relationship as a referral source. That would be a key player, a key contact for me to have. And if I don't have that person in my world, well, hopefully somebody I know does. So I'm going to reach out to them and say, hey, do you happen to know somebody in one of these two fields? I'm looking for somebody to connect with to help me build my business. Okay. If all I got to do is introduce you to somebody to help you build your business, am I going to be reluctant to do that? I'm going to be happy to do that, right? It didn't cost me anything. And I got to help you succeed, okay? So it wasn't a big ask. And if the answer is no, I, 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 I don't know anybody. I don't know an elder, you know, law attorney, you know. But gosh, if I, if I think of someone, I'll, I'll definitely let you know, you know, great. We had a great conversation. We had a chance to connect. Okay. All right. So it was number four. Next one, take a survey. How's that for an easy call? Where do we see surveys pop up all the time? Our social media, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there's no reason I can't take the survey in person and publish it on my social media. Because again, I want the conversation, I want the interaction, okay? And, and understand that that survey could be a fun survey or it could be a very real estate based survey. So 
It could be, what's your favorite Italian restaurant in Gwinnett County, okay? Do inquiring minds wanna know where the best Italian food is? The best sushi food is? The best Chinese food, you know? We, we wanna share with our database ideas. So how cool would it be to take a survey of where you're trying to grow your business and the people that live there and find out where the top two sushi restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Italian restaurants, pizza places, and another one, Thai restaurant. So, so pick five of them, put those in your survey and then tell everybody, hey, before I let you go, you know, hey, Amy, how are you doing? How's family, how are the kids? Hey, listen, before I let you go, I'm doing something really fun uh, for, for my, my, my social media, uh, for my real estate business. And, and I'm in the middle of doing a survey and, and I had just five questions I wanted to ask. Can I have just a minute to ask those five questions? Nothing invasive, I promise. No, fantastic. What is blah, blah, blah? What is blah, blah, blah? Okay. Hey, be watching on my, my uh, real estate page because I'm going to post up the results uh, after I finish the survey next Monday. And then you'll know all the best restaurants in Gwinnett County. Okay. Is that fun? Is that interactive? Okay. Did I mention real estate like two or three times in there? Yeah. Am I trying to get them used to going to my social media and seeing me even more? Yeah. Okay. But it could also be how likely are you to buy or sell in the next year uh, or two years or five years? And, and you can break it up like that. You know, that, that could be, you know, hey, when, when you consider how likely you are to buy or sell your next property, is that likely to happen in the next year? two years, five years, 10 years, or I'm never moving again, okay? Those are the four answers to the survey, okay? And I don't care what the answers are. It's just, I wanna interact with them and I want it to be fun and I'm gonna share that information and I can put up on my website. Hey, listen, I talked to a hundred people and this is what I find, you know? 35% of them are, going to, are planning or thinking about moving in the next year, 25% within the next two years, uh, and, and blah, blah, blah. Share that information out as a fun way to interact. Okay. Um, an, another one. Uh, and again, guys, you can give context to some of this stuff. Hey, I've been reading a lot of really interesting articles lately um, about since COVID came out, that what people want in their house has changed a lot. And, and so I'm, I've been calling everybody that I know and, and just kind of taking an informal survey. You know, now, now that we've been through a year and a half of being stuck in our home a lot more than we have been, what are the most important things that you're going to be looking for in your next house when you go buy it? Is that an interesting conversation starter? Yeah, and I'm not asking them to commit to buying or selling their house. I'm just asking them to start thinking about when I do sell my next house, what I'm looking for. And I can follow that up with some very specific things, you know. Uh, so, so I've got five things that I want to ask you about, Cheryl. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, how important is a home office? Okay. How important is it? Um, that, that you have a, uh, a large kitchen, a formal dining room, you know, pick and create the questions just to create some really interesting conversations and get them thinking, do I want that or not want that? You know, could, could be a home gym, could be a home theater, you know, and then compile those results and, and put those out. And it's not the results that are so important. It's the conversation that you have leading into them and the conversations that may follow up, you know, because what if they're like, oh, my gosh, if I could have a house that had a home gym 
and a home theater, life would be golden. What's, what, what, what's the next thing out of your mouth? Well, you could. Mm. I could help with that. You know, and, and you could say that jokingly and comically, but that may be the spark that gets them thinking about this house really doesn't meet their needs anymore. Okay. And it might be, oh my gosh, Latoya, I can't believe you called today and you started asking these questions because we've been talking about the last week about getting our house in the market and selling it. it, it this must be a sign from God. Okay. You're going to hear that more than once in your life. I promise if you connect with people. Okay. Do you guys like this idea? Is this fun? Is that easy? Yeah, it's not intrusive, is it? Okay. Next one. Take a fake listing appointment. Let me see if I can get rid of this. How do I? Okay. All right, so take a fake listing appointment, trade like a real appointment. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to call, I'm not going to do this for everybody. So this isn't something that I could do on a large scale, okay? But, but maybe I pick five or six of my best friends that, that maybe have never referred anybody to me, okay? And that might be even potentially around that time that they might be considering selling themselves. And, and the way that I set the conversation up would be, hey, Amy, uh, Trey, how are you doing? How are you family? How are the kids? Hey, listen, I could really use your help. I just put together a, a brand new presentation piece for uh, when I meet with sellers for me to go through and, and, and help them with the listing process. And, and it's something that I need to practice and rehearse a little bit. And, and I really would appreciate getting some feedback on it. Would you be open to us having a fake listing appointment and letting me come out and meet with you as if you were gonna sell your house and walk you through what I do to help my sellers and, and go over the, the, the market data for your house. And, and then when we're done, you give me some feedback on, on was the presentation well put together? Was it well paced? Um, was there anything you felt like was missing from it or if it was too much? Would, would you be willing to do that with me? Probably would take about 30 minutes. Would you, Amy? I don't know. I'm really busy. <laughs> Thank you. Stay through my heart. Um, so sorry, but, you had to throw that out. No, I absolutely love it. And and if we were really role playing, I would I would slice right through that. And would still be getting together. Um, but uh, but what are the benefits of this? Okay, a lot of times the reason that our people we're really close to haven't referred us or don't refer us is they don't yet have confidence in our ability, okay? Even if I'm not selling your house, Amy, because you're not going to move. You're going to live in your house the next 20 years. You, you might even have plans to die in your house. But and you're never going to have the opportunity to experience my skill set and, and to be able to confidently refer me. This fake appointment, you get to see me up close and personal. How well do I prepare for my appointments? How well do I know my material? What, what can you expect if you refer me to a friend? That, that What sort of experience is that friend going to have? Okay. So this fake appointment gives you confidence now in being able to refer me. Does that make sense? Yes. And... What if you were surprised? What? My house is worth 475000 Might that change your thinking about whether you stay or go? It could. That fake appointment might turn into a real appointment. 
But more than anything is I want to build really strong referral sources. I want somebody to be able to say, oh, my gosh, you've got to call my guy, Trey. He will take care of you. Okay. I want as many people like that in my life as I possibly can. This is a good way to create a few more of them. Okay. Easy conversation to ask for that fake appointment. I think so. And you go prepare just like any other appointment. You pull your comps, you, you print out your listing presentation, you've got your listing paperwork there with you to go over and explain, treat it like it's the real thing and then go make the presentation. And then you guys can sit and have a laugh about it. And you know what? You might also get some really good constructive feedback at the end of it. If that person really does care about you, and there was something you hadn't thought of, something you were missing, something you weren't doing, they may give you an absolutely brilliant idea to help you on your next presentation. Okay. Next one, number seven, ask for referrals. And, and I really am not a huge fan of the old uh, tired, you know, who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Okay, because so often by the time we discover that someone is interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, they've already started the process and, and it's not available to us as an opportunity. Because when do most people start talking about the house that they're going to buy? Once they're under contract. When do they start talking about the house that they're going to sell? Once the sign goes in the yard. Okay. Um, and it's too late for us to have an opportunity. So if I'm looking for referrals, you know, the conversation I want to have with people is I want to find out who's going through life events. You know, hey, Cheryl, it's Trey with Keller Williams. How are you doing? How's friends, family? Uh, what's been going on? Uh, are you ready for Thanksgiving? Fantastic. Hey, before I let you go, uh, we're coming into that time of year when, when people are setting New Year's resolutions and are, and are making some big changes and and really good people for me to know um, are people that are about to or just retired can can you think of anybody in your world that might have just retired that that you might be able to connect this up with that, that I might be able to see if they have any real estate needs I could help them with do you see how that's a very different conversation than who do you know that's thinking about buying, selling, and investing in real estate? Okay. Because when do we know when somebody gets engaged, married, or divorced? Do we usually know about that before that's all finalized? You know what I mean? Yeah, and, you, uh, you know about it after the fact. Well, I, the divorce, you know, my close friends, I know when they separated, yeah. the divorce may not be finalized yet. So once they separate, um, so going through a divorce, I know we may be selling a house. And even if we're not selling that house, somebody might be buying another one, right? Or we might be selling one and buying two. Um, I want to I wanna know about that. Uh, when somebody gets engaged, do they typically move in together right after engagement? No, it's usually somewhere closer to being married or after married, but that engagement or got married, um, those are people that are going to be looking to buy, you know? So, so I want to know who those are. Uh, what about a new baby? The, the, does a growing house need a bigger home oftentimes? Yeah. When, when do we know somebody's pregnant? You know? Months before the baby gets here, we know they're pregnant. When okay. they announce it all on Facebook. When they announce it all on Facebook, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those are things that stick with people. Those are things we celebrate and pay attention to. We don't celebrate and pay attention to, yeah, I'm thinking about selling my house, right? And, and so if we can get people accustomed to looking for and introducing us to people that are going through life changes, um, this is where the opportunity is. And, and I added this a little thing in here, other markets. Don't forget in your conversations to remind your referral sources and your people that you can help their friends and family 
no matter where they are in the country. Okay. And, and so that's a really easy conversation to have. You know, hey, Amy, it's Trey. How are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Uh, hope everything's going well with you. Hey, I, I know you've been really good about referring people to me uh, in the past, and, 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 I'm, and I'm hoping that continues to be the, pay, the, the case going forward. I just wanted to make you aware, because I don't think we've ever had this conversation, that if you've got friends or family in other parts of the country, I've got a huge referral network of agents and I can help get them connected with a really good agent right where they are, okay? I, I would really love to help them get connected with a good agent and, and not leave it up to chance and, and then maybe wind up with a crappy agent. So if you hear of any one of your friends or family anywhere buying or selling a home, can you get me connected with them? Does that change your thinking a little bit? Is that a conversation worth having? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Number eight, invite them somewhere. Invite them to a webinar. Who do we know that has a webinar or a class that would be a good thing for them to come to? Spring Lending, the Credit Essentials class. Absolutely. Okay. That's one example. Um, Client events. So, Amy, you're you're doing the the parade and the the festival. You know, you, you ought to be calling your people, and when you're having a conversation, with, hey, before I let you go, we're going to be at the whatever Christmas parade. You know, would love to have you come out there. If you've never been, there's this going on, this going on, this going on. It's a ton of fun. Would you like me to email you a reminder or some other information about it? That's an easy conversation, right? Okay. As you grow and you have a little more money to spend, client events. Okay. Those are those are fun. Go go rent a movie theater. Go rent a bouncy house. Go do whatever. And, and here at the office, we're going to have several events throughout the year. Um, next year, we had we had a couple this year where we had the, the shredded truck come out. Um, and, and we have another one besides like that. Um, we're we're going to have try to have some socials and some different things. Uh, next year, we'll be doing, uh, when we're in our new place, we'll probably have a trunk or tree. So if, if there's an event that we're going to play host to it, we just want you to invite your people to it, okay? It's for you and for your benefit, for you to have a way to have a conversation uh, with your database. Um, and invite them to a community event. You know, hey, I know you're really close, didn't know if you had heard, but on the Lawrenceville Green, they're having a movie night this weekend on Saturday night. They're playing this, one of my favorite movies. I'm gonna be out there. Um, Love it if you came out and dropped by. Look for me. I'll have the big bright yellow umbrella. Whatever it is, okay? It doesn't have to be your event that you're inviting them to, but you're inviting them to come see you at the event, okay? Just to show you're plugged in. Um, your open house. And then just inviting them to coffee or drinks. When do we build the best relationships with people? on the phone, in our email, through text, or face-to-face. -face. Always face-to-face, -face, okay? If you like coffee, go have two coffee dates every single day, okay? Find 15 to 30 minutes that you can get face-to-face -face with somebody and make that just a normal part of your day, okay? And, and work to set those up and invite, you know, have your coffee dates built in on your calendar and continue to be looking, who can I have? Because you're going to have a cup of coffee, right? If you're a coffee person, you're having a cup of coffee. All right? Yeah, those coffee people love their coffee. Those coffee people love those coffee. So, so take advantage of that. Go have your coffee and do business at the same time. Go build a relationship with somebody. 
Um, and if you're more prone to uh, adult drinks, uh, once a day, not twice, once a day, uh, go meet somebody for drinks, okay? Maybe you do it once or twice a week. But, but just as a reminder, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge ordeal, right? This doesn't need to be a two-hour dinner event or anything. Hey, we just hadn't talked in a while. Let, let, let's connect. You know, how about we go meet it? You know, um, uh, Aga Vera, because we like her margaritas, um, at the bar, have a drink Thursday night. How six o'clock work for you? Okay. It's not a dinner invitation. It's go have a margarita invitation. Okay. Uh, maybe if you want to make it a Taco Tuesday, uh, that's just fine too. But just remember, get personally connected with people and those invitations because we spend four or five minutes on the phone. Yes, I get to touch on real estate. I spend 15 or 20 minutes one-on-one -on -one with you. Do you think real estate's going to come up just naturally? Mm -hmm. And do you think there's probably going to be questions and we're going to unpack it a little bit more? Yeah. That's where we have a chance to really connect and make some questions with people. So it should be an easy conversation. Number nine, offer something of value. You know, uh, hey, Latoya, Trey, how are you doing? How are family? How are the kids? Hey, listen, while I've got you on the phone, uh, I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from people that are using my app to keep track of what's for sale in their neighborhood. Um, that way, they're at any time, they're able to look and see what properties are listed for without having to go log on and go anyplace else. Is that something you'd be interested in me sending over to you for you to download and take a look at what's going on in your neighborhood. Works all over the whole country. I don't care if you say yes or no. I just wanted a chance to offer it to you, right? Uh, the vendor list. Again, I don't necessarily want to send my people, hey, here's 80 businesses I know and trust. Um, if you need any of these, use these. I want to set myself up as the go-to person, okay? So the conversation would be more like, hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Uh, hey, while I've got you on the phone, I know that when it comes to real estate, you're probably going to think of me and call me when you have a need, but you're probably not going to think of me for your roof or your garage doors or your plumbing. And I just wanted to remind you, being in real estate, I work with all kinds of vendors, and I've got connections that, that are going to take really good care of you if you ever don't have somebody in your world to do it already. So if you find somebody need, you need around the home and don't know who to call, just remember to call me and I'll work to connect you with somebody you trust. Would that be okay? That's easy, right? Did I remind him I'm in real estate? Mission accomplished, okay? Offer to add them to your newsletter. Okay. Or, and I leave this one last on this list, the, the CMA. Okay. Offering to, to give them market information on their property. That takes a lot of time. A good CMA takes about 20 minutes to do. I don't necessarily want to offer that to everybody unless I think there's a good likelihood that it's going to lead to something else. But that may be something you want to do. Okay, and I'm perfectly okay with that. So I'll leave that on there because that there is a value to that. That that is your time gathering, putting that information together. Okay. And and you guys can add more to that. Okay. It it could be, hey, I, I just put together a list, went and compiled it from everywhere uh, of the top thing, 10 things you need to do to your home to get it ready for winter. Would you be interested in me texting that to you or emailing that to you? Okay. No, we're good. Okay, fine. No problem. Hey, love it. Just wanted to offer it out there. Man, tell the wife I said hello, and hopefully we'll see you this weekend at church. Okay, great. Take it back to the personal, wrap the conversation up. I don't need to twist their arm. I just need to remind them I'm in real estate. You know, but somebody else will be, yeah, that would be fantastic. You know, and, and guys, it could be anything. It could be the top five places to go see fireworks for July 4th. So just think about what do I have? What do I know? What would I find interesting uh, and, and make that happen? Okay. Next one, share information. 
okay? And again, I wish that little button wasn't there. Uh, so changes in interest rates, okay? This one's been a big deal over the last few years is just keeping people informed. And, and the, the way you can set the stage with this is, hey, Latoya, it's Trey, how are you doing? How family, how kids? Hey, listen, I was in a class today. They were talking about the projected interest rates over the next year. And we're projecting interest rates were gonna go up about 1%. So I just wanted to reach out to everyone that I knew that owned their home and, and make sure that you were under three and a half percent interest because if, if you're in a position that you would benefit from refining, if you don't do it now, you're going to lose that opportunity in the next year, most likely. You know, do you happen to know what your interest rate is? You see how you can use that little bit of information to share, okay? Is that a valuable call to them? Okay, no, man. We're at 2.675, you know, oh my, that's phenomenal. That is awesome. So glad you guys are there. Okay. Uh, next one, get rid of PMI. This is a really a now conversation. Okay. This is very pertinent and in the moment, and this may not apply in, in a couple of years. Um, so, but in the last two years, uh, property values have increased so much so fast that people that just bought two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, that didn't put 20% down had to pay PMI on their property, okay? Private mortgage insurance or MPI, mortgage premium insurance. Um, they had to pay one of those two if they didn't put 20% down. Well, their home values have increased so much, they now have 20% equity in their home. And they could refi their home or potentially just uh, uh, talk to their lender and drop the PMI. So it's just ma us making them aware, hey, you may have this opportunity to save a couple of hundred dollars a month. Make sense? Okay. Again, just in the sharing information, could be our vendor list that we want to share, um, could, could be uh, local market information, could be, you know, really if you're political, it could be a reminder of a call to vote and, and, and information on where our voting uh, polls are, okay? Just don't be afraid to reach out to them and say, hey, here's something I know that I thought you would find a benefit. And that can be real estate or that could be community related. Okay. And either one of those are going to be a benefit. All right. So that was 10. That's what I promised you. Are those good? Some ideas in there you hadn't heard before? Yes. Good. Um, I, think, right. I think you should. Just the way you, you um, present it, I mean, it's not information I didn't know. It's just that the way you present it, I kind of, I've been looking for light bulbs for the last month. <laughs> and um, that really, that helped me a lot. Fantastic. Um, I love hearing that. And, and I've got a bonus one for you here that, that is really the most blunt and straightforward one of all. Ask for their business, okay? There's nothing wrong with calling and asking them for their business, okay? And, and I put in here, you earned it, and they need you, okay? And this is just a reminder to you of a couple of things. If I've done all those other things that, that we did in the first 10, and I've made sure they know that I'm here as a resource for them, I, I can connect them with vendors, I can take care of their friends and family, I'm giving them market information. Um, I'm, I'm helping them save money on their property taxes, on their PMI. Have I earned their business at that point? Have I at least earned the right to ask for their business? Without a doubt, okay? And, and that second part, the reminder, they need you. You specifically. 
Are there crappy real estate agents out there? Everybody say yes. 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 Okay. If we don't reach out to the people that we know and we care about and make sure that they know we're available to help them, the probability that they wind up with a crappy agent goes up dramatically. Okay. Are you going to take good care of your people? Are you going to, are you going to put their needs above your own? I, I, I contend that you are as a fiduciary, okay? That, that's your job. Is every agent think that way and act that way? No, they don't. And, and these are because these are your friends, these are your family, the people you care about. If, if we don't make sure that they hire us and they wind up with a crappy agent, whose fault is it? Part of it falls on us because we didn't make sure they knew that we were the better option for them. So don't be afraid to ask for the business. And this time of the year is a perfect time to do it. And, and the, the, the script for that, you know, hey, Amy, how are you doing? How are the family? How are the kids? Hey, listen, as we're wrapping up 2021, I'm working on forecasting for my 2022. And so I just wanted to check with everybody that's in my world and see, did you have any real estate plans for 2022? Okay. That's a different question than, are you thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate? Okay. I can always unpack it with them, but do you have any real estate plans for 2022? That doesn't mean January, right? We're not talking two months from now. We're talking about in all of next year, are we, are we thinking we might make a move? We might uh, start looking at an investment property. That helps me put people on my radar. You know, well, we're kind of iffy. We don't know, you know, 2022 may be a little bit fast. Okay. So I'm going to put you in the maybe column, <laughs> right? So, and, and for somebody like, yeah, it's probably going to happen next year. Probably not early. It's probably going to happen at the end. Well, there, yes. Okay. It's just a matter of timing now, you know, and somebody else is going to tell you, oh, unless the world comes to an end and something crazy happens, uh, we're going to be here for the next 10 years. Okay. They're in my no call. Okay. Still want to love on them. Still want to call them and keep up with them because they're a great referral source. But I know that I don't need to be having, are you thinking about buying or selling conversations with them going forward? So, but I don't want to have this conversation as for their business every phone call. If all they ever hear from me is, are you looking to buy, sell, or invest, buy, sell, or invest, buy, sell, or invest, they're going to stop taking my phone call. I need to have all those other conversations that they are more about them, how, how I can help them, and, and just trying to build the connection with them. Okay. And guys, that's it for me. So any, any questions, any feedback, any ahas from what we talked about? Um, like Cheryl said, it, there were things that I, I already knew, but like the way you explained it and just gave examples, it just made it a lot better. Fantastic. No, good. All right. Well, guys, glad you were here. If I can help with anything else, call me, text me, email me. I hope it was worth your time to be here today. So, it was. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Thank you, Trey. Bye.